Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you once again for joining me today. My name is General Confusion, and this is Total War Warhammer 2. And this really should be a Dark Elf battle. I've had several more of those, some of which were interesting, but I had a really good Skaven battle, actually, and I wanted to show it off. Uh, so I'm playing Skaven versus Wood Elves, which I have not done before. And I feel like this is one of the good matchups for the Skaven. I mean, the Skaven have a bunch of good matchups. They do have a couple hard ones, but Wood Elves are not one of them. Uh, so... To talk about why, let's kind of introduce the army list. So my army list, I've got a whole bunch of Skaven Slave Spears up front. In my back line, I've got, so I've got four Skaven Slave Spears. In my back line, I have four Clan Rat Spears as well. Well, three there and then one way in the back. But mixed in with them, I have two units of Storm Vermin with Sword and Shield. Now, I've talked down this unit before. Uh, in the metagame of Warhammer 2, this unit was not worth very much. And that's because they're an elite infantry unit that has high armor, middling stats, and low armor piercing. If you look at them here, their armor strength, their weapon strength, so their armor strength, their weapon strength is 34, and only 9 of that is AP damage. So against heavily armored units, they don't do very well. Um, but there is one type of unit that Storm Vermin Sword and Shield excel against, and that's what I would call the Berserker unit type, uh, which is a unit type that became quite popular late in Warhammer 1's uh, life cycle. In Norska has the Marauder Berserkers, the Empire has the Flagellants, Bretonia has the uh, Battle Pilgrims. These are all units that have low armor, high attack, often a bonus versus infantry. Uh, so they're fragile but hard hitting. Some of them are fearless, some of them are merely high leadership, but they all share these characteristics of being relatively low defense, relatively high offense, and having low armor. The Wood Elves have a unit like this. It's the War Dancers, and the War Dancers are also their premier anti-infantry unit. So War Dancers have uh, okay hit points, but nothing too terribly special. If you compare them to the Storm Vermin, uh, they're about 2,000 lower. They have high melee attack. They have a pretty good melee defense, so they're unusual among Berserker units for having a high melee defense. And they have a true anti-infantry bonus of 8, on top of a weapon strength of 36, which is pretty substantial. So against infantry, they do a lot of damage, but it's not armor piercing, and they have a high attack and a, and a pretty good defense as well. 20% physical resistance and 15 armor, though, means that they're not terribly, terribly well protected, and particularly, they don't have any special defense against non-armor piercing damage. So when you compare them against the Storm Vermin, you see instantly why it is they're going to lose. War Dancers, they have lower HP, they have low protection. Their melee defense is good, but not only as good as the Storm Vermin's attack, even a little bit lower. And the Storm Vermin have a ton of armor, as well as a high melee defense. So melee attack versus melee defense, the, uh, the War Dancers are going to do all right, but their damage is not going to get through that 90 armor. They're going to lose an average of more than 60% of their damage every hit, whereas the Storm Vermin are going to be losing only an average of about 30% of their damage, or a little less, which means that the Storm Vermin are quite simply going to cut a unit of War Dancers to ribbons. So in this matchup, and in matchups against factions that use these kinds of infantry units, these Berserker low-armored units, um, Storm Vermin Sword and Shield are actually extremely efficient. I've done some testing. Storm Vermin can take on two units of Flagellants back-to-back, -back, or even at once, and come out on top. Storm Vermin with Sword and Shield. So in that context, and that context only, Storm Vermin, Sword, and Shield are very efficient. But anyway, so infantry line, four Skaven Slave Spears up front, four Clan Rat Spears, two Storm Vermin, Sword, and Shield. I have one unit of Poison Wind Globadiers, just in case of Tree Man or Tree Kin or anything big I want to shoot. My leadership core, I have a Gracier of Ruin and two Assassins, uh, the standard Goon Squad. The Gracier of Ruin on the Bell is a little bit of a risky pick because the Wood Elves can bring long-range armor-piercing missiles, but I thought it was worth it because I... Basically because I bet that the, the Wood Elf player was going to do this, was going to go heavy, heavy infantry. And the Grey Seer, I've brought Arcane Conduit, Cracks Call, Howling Warp Gale in case of dragons, and Warp Lightning as well as his special abilities. Uh, then I have two units of Rat Ogres, which I have hidden in this little tiny patch of woods, and yes, they are hidden. I was just hoping that the enemy would obligingly come to me or something anyway, it doesn't really matter. Over here I have one unit of Gutter Runners with Poison, because Wood Elves are low armor. And I have one Doom Wheel, because once again I was betting on him going Heavy Infantry. So my opponent has, up front, three units of Dryads, which are a pretty good pick. Um, 
Their melee defense is low, but their attack is fairly high, and they do have physical resistance on top of 60 armor, so they're pretty tough. They also cause fear, which is always good against the Skaven. They are weak to fire, um, but that's only really relevant if the Skaven have brought warp fire throwers, and warp fire throwers are so inefficient anyway that it's not really going to matter much. Um, because lightning attacks are magical, but not flaming. So we've got three Dryads up front. We have two War Dancers with Azrai Spears as anti-large. And War Dancers with Azrai Spears are fantastic anti-large units. Um, their anti-large bonus is very high. They have pretty good melee attack, very high defense, and they're fast for infantry. So they're very, very good at getting in there and cutting up large units. Uh, I have we, They have one, two, three, four, five War Dancers two Wildwood Rangers in the back for anti-armor work. These units will do very, very well against Storm Vermin with Sword and Shield. And they are led by Durthru, the ancient tree man himself, who has taken a bunch of stuff. He's brought the sword, Foe Seeker, uh, Pan's Impenetrable Pelt, Flock of Doom, Wisson's Wild Form, and of course the Blessing of the Ancients. Uh, but the Blessing of the Ancients is only useful when Durthru is in a forest, and on this map that's not really going to happen unless he's over here. So that's the Wood Elf army. I was checking behind me to see if there were any Vanguard deployed units, but there weren't. This player has gone all in on the infantry rush, betting that the War Dancers will be able to overwhelm my cheaper infantry. So the whole Wood Elf army starts moving forward. Uh, I'm still kind of sitting still for the moment, evaluating the situation. I'm going to get my uh, Doom Wheel and my Gutter Runners moving forward. I was wondering if he maybe had some stealth archers some stalking archers, but then I was looking at his points and I'm like, he can't have anything else. This must be it. Because that's a lot of points into the infantry. Wildwood Rangers are not cheap. I'm expanding my infantry line because I don't need to protect the back. Uh, so I'm moving the, the spears forward to join the secondary line. The front line, of course, will die almost instantly, but that's okay. They're just Skaven slaves. Moving up to flank, I want to get some shots on those Azrai spears because I want my rat ogres to be useful. Um, of course, their armor piercing is not going to be terribly, terribly powerful against this low armor faction. I kind of brought them just in case. Just in case of something I hadn't expected. Uh, they could do anti-tree man work, all that kind of good stuff. So the Spear War Dancers are taking quite a bit of damage. That low armor makes them very, very vulnerable to shots from the Gutter Runners. So you can see they've already lost seven models. And this is basically just going to be a big mainline clash. Uh, the Skaven Slave Spears charge into the War Dancers and are getting instantly destroyed. Uh, but I do drop a little bit of a cracks call right there that wipes out some of these War Dancers very effectively, also dropping some lightning. Uh, and then the Storm Vermin Sword and Shield are going in, and they're just starting to rack up kills. Uh, over here, the Skaven Slave Spears are breaking. I'm flanking with the Rat Ogres. These Clan Rat Spears are holding up against the War Dancers pretty well. They are, of course, losing, but they're holding up. Um, they've got a Flock of Doom, the Sword of Death, all this stuff dropping on my Lord. But Durthu is in the area of effect of the Rival Hide Talisman, which means his attack is very low. And he's starting to get pelted by the Poison Wind below the Deers, who are doing some pretty decent damage. Over here, he summons a Manticore. And I'm trying to run the Poison Wind Global Deers away. It's not going terribly well. But you can see over here, the Clan Rats and Skaven Slaves are breaking, but the Storm Vermin are not. The Storm Vermin are just standing there, racking up kills. Uh, where's my other unit, Storm Vermin? Over here, my Assassins are pretty much holding down the whole center. These War Dancers have broken because they got annihilated by my magic. Uh, yeah, my other Storm Vermin also standing here, racking up kills, killing more of the war dancers than they are losing. The rat ogres are now coming in for some rear charges. Over here my doom wheel has gotten into the infantry, taken a bunch of damage from the wildwood rangers, but he's also scored a bunch of kills and is still going strong. Over here the gutter runners have run a rear charge on the Azrai spears. The feral manticore has jumped on the poison wind globideers, but is actually losing because the poison wind globideers have a hundred armor and the manticore does not have much armor piercing damage. Dropping some more lightning, Getting some good damage done, uh, 95 kills with the Grey Seer of Ruin, because with that high armor, War Dancers do not hurt them. Uh, Wildwood Rangers can hurt him, but they're being kind of bogged down by the Skaven Slave Spears. And look, over here, the Storm Vermin have broken this whole mass in conjunction with the Gutter Runners, and now are now just running them down. Over on this side, the Storm Vermin, technically they're losing, because they've got the Dryads and all, and Durthu in here. 
but uh, they're holding like champions and they've still killed more than they've lost, which considering their high numbers is impressive. Uh, the Gracie are still doing just fine. About to drop some more lightning on these Wildwood Rangers and see, look at that. More than 500 damage to each unit uh, and a bunch of kills. Warp Lightning is a great spell. Uh, the Poison Moon Globadiers are trying to pull out as the Manticore finally goes down, but at this point, they're just not needed. Uh, the enemy army is coming apart. Durthu is being ganked by my two assassins plus the Rat Ogres. He's lost all of his leadership and all of a sudden army losses kick in, and the whole Wood Elf army routes. And that is the battle. So this is why I say that the Skaven actually have a good matchup against the Wood Elves. Now, if he'd taken a heavy skirmish build, which Wood Elves can certainly do, um, it might have been trickier. But even against a heavy skirmish build, uh, they would have wasted a lot of arrows on Skaven Slaves, they would have wasted a lot of arrows on Clan Rat Spears, and the Storm Vermin Sword and Shield are very, very resilient against archery. On top of that, the Doom Wheel is very hard to take down with archery, certainly hard to take down before it can get into your archers, and the Gutter Runners are pretty resilient as well. I could have been dropping spells at long range, the assassins would have been invisible at any kind of range. So really the only thing he could have des destroyed with archery would have been my weak infantry. And if I'm facing a, sk a skirmish heavy build, I can't say words today, if I'm facing a skirmish heavy build, uh, I don't need weak infantry all that much. So over here you can see the war dancers, they got a lot of kills, but most of their kills were against crap. Uh, whereas the Storm Vermin Sword and Shield held up very well, uh, the Gutter Runners with Poison did a ton of damage, the Doom Wheel did a lot of damage, the Gracier of Ruin did a, a lot of damage, as is usual with the Gracier of Ruin. And the Rat Ogres not only got a bunch of kills, and one of them got a Chevron, but also escaped virtually unharmed. Um, without the Azrai Spears being able to get onto them, there was nothing else on the field that could seriously threaten those Rat Ogres, except Durthu himself, and Durthu got bogged down and assassinated pretty hard. So, you know, almost equivalent losses, but I had 500 extra troops. Um, so against against the Wood Elves, and against factions that rely on this kind of lightly armored high attack infantry in general, Storm Vermin Sword and Shield are actually a really good pick. Uh, so against the Empire, when the Empire goes heavy flagellants, uh, Storm Vermin Sword and Shield can be very useful. Against Norska, whenever Norska gets implemented, I th against Marauder Berserkers, I think Storm Vermin Sword and Shield are going to be very useful, although, since Norska has all those monsters, you might want to swap them out for Halberds. Um, against other Skaven, actually, Storm Vermin Sword and Shield can be quite useful, because they trade pretty efficiently with Plague Monks. So just something to keep in mind with your, uh, your Skaven builds, when you're going against someone that uses a lot of this kind of infantry, uh, it might be worth throwing one or two of the Sword and Shield in there. Although they're not useful in a lot of circumstances, if you expect high numbers of low armor infantry, they're very, very useful, and they can provide a very solid core for your infantry line that Skaven usually don't have, so it can be kind of surprising to your opponent when they have a couple of units that are going to stand there and take a while to break and inflict quite a few casualties against that lightly armored infantry. So anyway, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Just thought I'd show this one because it was kind of interesting. We'll get back to the Dark Elves and to uh, Fantasy General in the next few videos. So thank you all once again. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you like what I'm doing, and I will see you in the next one.